Ever been confused by load passes? Couldn't get a dependency of some model loaded? Was curious why load passes needed at all? Today we will cover all those questions and a bit more. I'm Andrew Tropin, I work on operating systems and programming languages and do a lot of free and open source software along the way. And let's get started. So basics first. The load pass is basically a variable which contains the directories where a guile process will be looking for the source code. Load passes can be set by guile load pass variable, environment variable, or with minus L flag specified to guile process. Also, in some other cases, for example, other applications like gigs can also have a minus L flag, which can work a bit different. And they can also support guile load pass as well. The values can be relative pass to the guile process, uh, absolute pass, and another special thing called ellipses. And this is where default value of load passes will be placed if you use this one. Otherwise, everything will be uh, everything specified in guile load passes and minus L flag will be uh, prepended to the default value of load pass provided by guile. Okay. Let's talk a bit about models. Models usually have name like this one, my sup super library, and they should be located in uh, my directories, super su subdirectory, and in library.scm file. Of course, the extension can be different in some cases. And uh, theoretically, you can put your model in whatever file you want, but to make Guile aware of this model, and make it easier for other tools, uh, it's better to use this convention. There's also another variable called guile load compiled pass, which can contain uh, Go files. And Go files is bytecode, uh, guile bytecode, and they will be loaded before uh, library source code if they're available. But if they are outdated, the uh, source code will be compiled if automatic compilation is enabled and used instead. Okay, let's explore the API a bit. The example here shows how I usually start my projects. The Gix shell sets guile load pass and guile compiled load pass and specify all needed dependencies inside it. But you can do it manually in case you don't use Gix or it can be done by other package manager if it was existed at the moment or if it will exist in the f in some future. Okay, after that I specify a few more additional load passes here and execute some command. In my case it's ARES server which I will be using to connect from my array ID. I already connected to it so let's start to evaluate some code. The first and obvious thing is load pass variable. We can just see the value of it. You can see we have source passes specified here. I used minus L flag to set those values. And also there are a few more load passes here, which probably comes from Geeks shell. At least this one comes from, uh, from Geeks shell. And all of those variables comes from uh, my guile distribution. And my guile installed with Geeks, so you can see those like hashes and a bit uh, strange values. Okay, uh, what next? Load compiled pass is where we are looking for already compiled things and it will uh, speed up the execution and loading uh, of the uh, models that we don't need to update too often. And another important variable is load extensions. Load extensions uh, is used in a different helper functions and it contains extensions that uh, will be looked up in the load pass. And as you can see here, there's empty string in the list uh, of extensions, which means wildcard. So uh, all additional and auxiliary functions will be uh, looking for all the extensions in the load pass. There's another function called add to load pass, which accepts the directory and it modifies the load pass in runtime or compile time and can be used like uh, as all the options you see here but inside your uh, scheme code okay so uh, to look in the search pass you can use uh, search pass in 
to look into load path, you can use the search path function or search load path function. Uh, they are available in Dix distribution. And here I look for file uh, in my project and you can see it returns the relative code. Sometimes I need uh, an absolute path, for example, for my ID implementation. Uh, and for this, I created a special wrapper which adds current working directory to the path, which is not absolute. Uh, if path is absolute already, it just returns this path. Uh, uh, that's uh, it. You can also see uh, I can find another files and uh, it will provide relative and absolute value as well. Um, you may be can curious why I have uh, a separate file for uh, model and another separate file for test for this model. Uh, I will explain it a bit, a bit later, but uh, you can see how it works. I have my model here and from this model I can execute test and you can see at the bottom it uh, executed somehow and the tests themselves defined in this model which contains test suffix. It's just a naming convention but using this naming convention I can execute tests for a particular model without including those tests in the source code that I will be shipping later. That's basically why I split those things. And as you can see here in load passes, there are two separate directories for the source code and for the tests. Another directory is dev directory. Here I uh, store the snippets that I need uh, during development to test things, to run things quickly or to uh, batch some jobs, but I don't need when I shipping my library to other people. So that's uh, about API. Let's recap the use cases for load passes. Of course, we can specify the dependencies using load passes. We can override the dependencies. If you prepend the value to the load pass list, this dependency will be loaded before other uh, versions of these dependencies. And you can, uh, for example, clone the, reposi uh, rep the repository of one dependency, ed edit it, add to load pass and use updated version uh, without packaging it or doing uh, some other fancy stuff. Also, uh, it's useful for using during the development. Another use case is splitting tests, splitting your dev snippets and uh, your actual source code. You can have all of them in your load pass when you're developing, but uh, having only uh, SRC when you're packaging and only SRC and dev uh, and test when you uh, ma making test on CI. Another use case that I didn't mention yet is splitting uh, source code for different di dialects. Uh, usually uh, I put all the source code into a subdirectory of the second level. Uh, first one is SRC, dev or test. The second one is the name of the language, guile, hood or scheme or anything else. Uh, here you can uh, use the same model, for example, in your hood source code and your guile source code. So you put this uh, model into SRC common and add uh, SRC common to guile load pass and to hood load, load pass uh, for your different sub projects. Okay, and uh, another thing that uh, you can use load passes for, for exploring resources in your source code. For example, you need to add uh, the value of some file, the content of the some file into string or do something else. You can use the same mechanism for uh, looking up uh, the for the file in your load pass. It can be a stub file, it can be some resource file or something else. But be aware that you need uh, to have a wild card in your load uh, extensions. Otherwise it will be, uh, it, it, uh, search load pass won't find this file in your load pass. You can set it temporary as we do in this simple wrapper. You can find this wrapper in RD lib uh, file model. Okay, and uh, the tricky part about load extensions is that some programs, for example, Gix, set the load extension to SCM only, so uh, no other files will be loaded. It's done for performance reason, and there's some uh, 
good reason for it, but uh, be aware of it. Also be aware of symbolink links and canonicalize path uh, helper because it resolves the symbolink link and you will get the file which outside of your load path. But in fact, it will be the same file which is in the uh, load path, but uh, the uh, directory name won't match and you can get some problems with it. It's a bit advanced, but you can still uh, face it. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed and I see you in a bit. Bye.